to the sixth inning, and they have played through five at New York. And at Shea, the Phillies and Mets are five to five. And they've gone to a new catcher, and I figured they would. I just knew they wouldn't take a chance on letting Pena go back out there, and it's Milt May. This time of year, when you're out of it, you don't want to take a chance with any of your players. That's why Marvell Wynn is not in there tonight. That's why Dale Bear is not in there. And now Tony Pena joins the ranks of the injured. So Milt May has come on, and he wanted to get the signal straight with McWilliams. Just foul down the third baseline. You know, Milt's dad... Pinky May. <laughs> One time in the minors, he homered against his dad from another ball club, and his dad ordered him knocked down. <laughs> I bet his dad's watching tonight. One ball, one strike. McWilliams fouled up by Boa. Boa had a hit in the second inning. Got to second on a throwing error by Morrison and scored on a Sutcliffe single. Right now, the Cubs are in front four to one. They've out hit the Pirates nine to one. Hey, look at the good doc. Dr. Glue, Tony Garofalo. Don't get hurt, Tony. That's back under the wicket. Shortstop will not have a play. Bo is on for the second time. That is a base hit. Once it got by Mick Williams, Larry Boa realized he had a good shot at a base hit. If Mick Williams doesn't stop it, it's through the middle. And as it was, Wotus can't come over and make any play out of it. Here is Sutcliffe. He drove it around in the second. And a ball that just picked up speed. And Ray, moving to his right, just got a fingertip. And that was all. And it went on into center for an RBI single. Butting this time misses strike one. As much as Jim Fry would like to see him swing away, he's got to be butting him. You want to get Bo to second base? The Cubs have nine base hits and three walks. Ten, excuse me, and they've only been able to put four runs up on the board. And Fry knows the value of another one, so watch Sutcliffe bunting, and he would like Jason Thompson to field it. Sutcliffe ready. Not this time, working on Boa, and the little captain was only about a half a step away. Boa in the last six weeks doing a lot of things. Not a big batting average, but some key hits. And been hustling down that line, been playing good shortstop. He'd love to have another ring, wouldn't he? One of the things that Jim Fry said when he went with Larry Boa down the stretch was, I know he's going to make all the plays, and I need a dependable man out there, and Larry filled the bill. 0-2. It. Pitcher's got to come off. His only play is to turn around and throw it away, covering it first. That's a 1-4 sack. So the big right-hander did just what Fry sent him up there to do. One thing I disliked about the play by Larry McWilliams was he had all kinds of time, and we've seen it time and time again. When a man comes in and bare hands a ball that you don't have to bare hand, you just leave yourself open for a mistake. If you have some time, use that glove. I think the carpet lulls them into a sense of false security because when you see a club come off of that, for instance, come to Wrigley Field and play on the grass, they try that and it usually costs them. Runner at second. Denier looking for his first hit of the night. If he could deliver here, it would be a big one. Drives it down the left side, but it will hook, foul, and end up in the bullpen. The Lacey word on Tony to Pena. Take a look. The word on Tony Pena, pull groin muscle. All right, and that's why they got him out of there. You knew the way he pulled up that it wasn't just a, a need for a little Alka-Seltzer. He really had a, he had a pull. And Takalvi getting loose in the bullpen, so they're going to go to the eighth short reliever early. One ball, one strike. I guess with all the money they put in the game, I should have said roll aids, huh? Out into right center. It'll hang up a long time. Center fielder Arcelik makes the play. Boa tagging, and he'll run over to third. Two away, it's up to Sandberg. That wasn't a long fly ball, but it was good base running on the part of Larry Boa. That's heads up baseball. There's a lot more ways to score from third base than there is from second. I don't see enough of that, boys. Too many cases with one out, and that man on second on a fly ball, the guy doesn't tag up and go to third. And you can score so many ways from third base with two out. All right, 
we've got Sandberg with two doubles and a bounce out. One ball and no strikes. Cubs batting in the sixth. They're leading four to one. They've led since the opening inning. Well, he almost threw that away. And there was one of the ways that you can get that run from third if he hits a wild pitch. Nice play by Milt May, who's not known for his agility. Milt's always swung a pretty good bat. Two balls, no strikes. Moves it up to 3-0. and oh. Matthews would be next. Ryan Sandberg with a seven-game hitting streak counting his hits tonight. Three and one. Larry Boa led off the inning with a single. Sacrifice got him to second. Fly ball to center moved him over to third. There's a fly ball out into center. Arcelik will be there. And he makes the play. Almost misjudged that ball, but stayed with it, made the play. So a leadoff single is wasted by the Cubs. Boa's left at third. Go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Cubs in front, four to one. Pirates will bat here in the bottom of the sixth. Wotus is due to lead it off. Then they'll go to their bench with Mitchell Page. Jack Brickhouse just brought up a good point, Milo. He said, what's in a pitcher's mind right now? And I said, he breaks down the game into a 27-piece puzzle, and those are the 27 outs. You take it one at a time. If you're successful with each piece of the puzzle, you throw a good ball game. And Sutcliffe isn't thinking about anything right now except Ron Wotus. If he gets him, then it'll be Mitchell Page. If he strings together 27 outs, he's got himself the 20 game, the championship, and most probably the Cy Young Award, but that'll all come at the end. This is Walters, who struck out on a foul tip the first time up, and it's a ball. End of six innings at Shea, tied 5-5, Phillies in the Mets. Here, Sutcliffe, as he works, has a 4-1 lead. Bottom of the sixth. High fly ball right, hangs up a long time, Moreland over, lots of room, lots of time, makes the play. So Otis flies out, and Mitchell Page will be announced as the pinch hitter. To this point, Sutcliffe has only given up one hit, and that one could have been fielded except for a tricky hop by Leon Durham. So Rick Sutcliffe has gone out there with a positive attitude tonight. He hasn't been happy with the type of stuff he's had in the last two ball games, and he realized that he'd have to come up with a good one here. Jim Fry brought him back a day earlier than he was scheduled. That was because if a tragedy happened, he would be available for Sunday. Doesn't look like that's going to happen if Sutcliffe continues along the same lines today. Mitchell Page started as a pirate, went in a big deal to Oakland, had a couple of pretty good years for them. Now here he is back. After he got to Oakland and had a couple of good years, he found himself back at Tacoma part of two seasons. So Jim Fry and Billy Connors on his left, Don Zimmer on his right. First year as a Cub skipper, trying to put them in the winner's circle. Foul back. Two strikes. Last night in the hotel restaurant, Dallas Green was having dinner with his wife, Sylvia, and they called Billy Connors over. He said, come on, I'll buy you dinner. The way you've been getting thrown out lately, you must owe the league a fortune. I can pick this one up. Nobody on and one away. Bob Beck, who was the subject of a big... Oh, Sparky Anderson's old nameplate. Well, that's kind of nice because he won his 100th game. The only manager to ever do it in both leagues. Bob Beck uh, from the uh, Wild Bunch over here. And Carol Haddon, a season ticket holder for many years. Part of the contingency who said, we've got to go see him do it on the road. One ball, two strikes. He got him. And that is number six in the strikeout department for Rick Sutcliffe. There's always two ways to get Mitchell Page. You could get him very high or very low. Sutcliffe chose the low road, and that curveball out of the strike zone retired Page. Up to the top of their order now with Joe Orsalak, who had a base hit in the fourth. It turned out to be a triple. Yeah, Davey Lopes in case he would be called on stretching out in the clubhouse. <laughs> it up 
the first base side, and it'll be clean because once it got by the mound, nobody's going to get him. They have two hits, and the rookie, Arcelik, has them both. Good idea by Joe Arcelik. Gets the ball by Sutcliffe. No chance. Everyone who talked about Arcelik before the game said he's really an aggressive player who hustles all the time. He's got a great arm, reminds you of Clemente or Dave Parker. The only question mark, is he going to be able to hit Major League pitching? Well, one thing that bunt does, it takes anybody off the hook about the other one that uh, was a little tainted, so nobody can talk about that now. Lee Lacy has been up twice, struck out twice. He's batting with a runner at first and two away. Rookie mistakes and only nine more outs for Rick Sutcliffe. He has him leaning towards second. After that, it's easy. See you later. The inning's over. Picked him off, and we have played six innings, and the Cub fans are starting to celebrate already. They want to do it in their seventh inning stretch. The Chicago Cubs, four. The Pittsburgh Pirates, one. Steve Stone and Jack Brickhouse, Harry Carey, back at Three Rivers Stadium. We've gone to the top of the seventh. The Cubs are about to clinch their first championship since 1945. And moving in to tell you about it here in the seventh inning is the guy who missed it in 1945, but is here for the big victory in 1984, Jack Bricka. All right, Harry and Steve, thank you very much. Just uh, kind of fun here to do one for old time's sake, and the Sarge is up there. He did me a big favor the other day at St. Louis when he popped one out of the ballpark and gave me a chance to give it the old hey, hey. Score of the ball game, of course, the Cubs out in front by a score of four to one right now. And Tacoldi is the new pitcher. And the Sarge has had himself a perfect night so far. A single and two walks. One run batted in. One scored. Cubs out in front. They put a lot of men on base tonight. They have ten base hits and three walks. They actually haven't capitalized as much as they could. And Tacoldi has just thrown one past the Sarge for a strikeout. Tacoby is 3 and 9 with a 287 earned run average making a 69th appearance that leads the Pirates. 13 saves also leads the Pirates. 81 and 2 thirds innings, 85 hits. He throws from the side. He's very difficult for right-handers to hit. And he's put together a pretty good year this year. All right, Lacey, Orsalak, and Froben in left center and right. Morrison, Wotus, Ray, Thompson, the infield third to first for the Pirates. Tacoby and Milkney, the battery. And there's a strike. Coaching at first, Vukovic over at third. Don Zimmer played umpire wire with Montague, Rennert, and Greg at first, second, and third. So we're just a few outs away, as the man says, from that great moment. And believe me, these Cub fans up here are making a lot of noise. There's a good flag down by Thompson. Makes the unassisted put out at first base on Moreland for out number two. Credit him with a fine play on that one. Jim Fry went to Chuck Tanner when Fry was the manager of the Kansas City Royals, and he said, I've got a young right-hander that throws very similar to Tacalvi, and I'd like Kent to work with him. Can I have your permission for Tacalvi to work with Quisenberry? Chuck said, yes, you can, and Tacalvi really helped Dan Quisenberry become the dominant reliever in the American League. Jack, uh, Jeff Winkle, who's the liaison to Governor Robert Orr of Indiana, has just called in a, a uh, message here wanting to congratulate the Cubs on a fine season. We'll be watching them in the playoffs. Ball one. Ron Say the batter. Two for three. Singles in the first and the fifth, sandwiched in between them, a strikeout in the third inning. Ball one strike one. You know, fellas, as I sit here and watch this game tonight and and just, you know, pray for this big win, I can't help but have some great memories flood back. And I'm talking about memories between the Cubs and the Pirates now. The history of this, of this rivalry is just absolutely uh, ripe with all kinds of great moments in sport. 
I suppose the most important was that darkness homer of Gabby Hartnitz in 1938. We'll never forget that one, of course. Did you call that game? Did you, you do it no. Again? no, I was in Peoria in those days. I was working baseball, though, Steve. I was working three I League ball then. Ball two, strike one. There's a ground ball to the right of the mouse. Slow roller picked up by Johnny Ray. The throw is in time, and it's a one, two, three inning for Tacoby. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. All right, on your feet, everybody. If you're a Pirate fan, and if you're a Cub fan, sit down. The score of the ball game, Cubs four, Pirates one. All right, here's the ball game going now to the Pirate half of number seven. Cubs out in front, four to one. I'm Jack Rickhouse, along with Harry Carey and Steve Stone and Milo, and we're having fun at Three Rivers, I'll tell you. And Jack, there was a sign that said, Welcome back, Jack, and it said the fans from New Zealand. Now, when did you do baseball in New Zealand? Oh, that's New Zealand, Illinois. Yeah. <laughs> it was really from Peoria, but they didn't know how to spell Peoria. <laughs> the sign didn't play in Peoria, Jack. <laughs> Lee Lacy leading off, number two man in the batting order. Suttle is still in there doing a fantastic job. But we're talking about those great memories, Harry and Steve. The last Cub triple play was against these Pirates last year. You fellas ought to remember that one. Say to Sandberg to Buckner last year. I remember the last triple play I saw also was against these same Pirates. Manny Sanguian hit a duet at a ball game I worked right up here in 72. Ball one. Cub outfield straight away, fairly deep. Foul ball. Gary Matthews in left. Wait a minute, have we got a change out there in left? Is that Kato out there, fellas? In the seven, they're tied up 5-5 in New York. Foul ball, Dernier in center, Moreland in right, Say, Boa, Sandberg, Durham, the familiar infield, third to first, Sutcliffe, and Dodie Davis, the battery. There you go. <laughs> Look at that, and there's the Budweiser right. ready, too. Ball two, strike one. There's a foul ball down the third base side. You know, the very first no-hitter I ever saw was against these Pirates. Sam Jones threw it in 55 at Wrigley Field. He filled the bases in the ninth inning with walks, and then he struck out the next three. Right, right, struck out the side. If Hollywood writes one like that, they say the writer got carried away, huh? Ball two, strike two. Al Monchak coaching at first. Bob Skinner at third. That's a strike call. Knee high to the outside corner. And Lacey was really fooled by that pitch. No complaints on that one. Lee Lacey started walking back when the ball hit Jody Davis's glove. And Sutcliffe strikes out number six. He's only allowed two base runners, but it was one man twice. Orselak, who tripled in the fourth and beat out a bunt in the sixth. That's all that's kept him from absolute perfection. Now let's take a look at Johnny Ray. Ray! Right back to the pitcher. And that stop. takes care of that one. Sutcliffe has done that three times today, so he's, the glove has helped him out. Hey, he's, he not only wants to Cy Young, uh, he, wants, he wants a gold glove. Get your hands off the cigar, Jack. <laughs> Don't you dare light one up. Who, me? Yeah. If I grab that cigar, it's to throw it out of here. <laughs> well, we have something in common. Oh Jason Thompson. A rose between two non-smoking thorns. There's a ground ball dribbling down to say at third. Going to be a little close. He is out at first. A one, two, three inning. All right. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left. Six more outs to go with the score. You better hold it now. I held it for you guys. You hold it for us. Right, Jack. The Cubs four, the Pirates one. <laughs> Harry Carey back at Three Rivers Stadium. We've gone to the top of the eighth. The Eastern Division Championship. And we'll be making plans for the playoffs at Wrigley Field. Tuesday and Wednesday, October the 2nd and 3rd. Each day, the game will start at 125 Chicago time. Jody Davis leading it off. 
There's a ground ball, deep shot. Up with the ball, Wolters fires to first for the out. Don't go away now. Even more exciting than the victory here will be the celebration in the Cubs clubhouse. And WGN Channel 9 is well prepared to bring it all to you. The cameras are already placed. Arnie will be there with his crew. One out, here's the bull. There's a high hopper. They get him at first base. It looks like the Cubs are anxious now to get this uh, thing over with to get into the clubhouse. You know, when that uh, Tacovi turns sideways, he's almost invisible. <laughs> he is the original. You know, he may have put on a couple of ounces since he came up, and it, it shows. <laughs> I remember he told us one time his eight-year-old kid beat him arm wrestling. Yeah, but he's gained a little weight since those days. He's, he's gained about 20 pounds over last year. Some think that maybe that's why he's not as effective. Here's Boa. He's had two hits. Hey, the Sarge is out of the ball game. Is in the clubhouse of Jay Johnstone. You knew he wouldn't miss this celebration. <laughs> ah, happy man, the Sarge, and why not? What a year. There's a little pop fly in the infield. One, two, three. Let's get him out, get it over with. Countdown time, six outs. We're going to the bottom of the eighth. Cubs are leading four to one. Harry Carey back at Three Rivers Stadium. Everything else in anti-climax now. Uh, Henry Cotto is playing left field. Sutcliffe is uh, there. That tells it all. The magic number is oh, zero. The Cubs, there's Jim Fry. He looks the same today as he did opening day, but you know he's a far happier man. I think he's got a heavier cadence to the gum chewing. It's a little bit more brisk tonight as they count down with only six outs left. Six, here's Milt May to lead it off. Now let's count them off now. Boy, there's so many notes. I've been reading them as fast as I can. I want to recognize all these wonderful people. Little Reason and Jake and Helen Devine from Valparaiso are here. This, I read to you the governor's mentioned wire from the state of Indiana. Governor Orr. Here's the pitch to man to strike this call. Alan Carlin is here from Morgantown, West Virginia, formerly of Lincolnwood. There you're getting a look. You know, WGN has set up not only for complete coverage in the clubhouse of the Cubs, but we have three different points of pickup in Chicago. The, the Sports Ultimate Bar, Wrigley Field, where it's crazy time already, they tell me, all the bars, Murphy's and Cubby Bear and Bernie's and all that crowd, and Rush Street. The, the mayor won't be there tonight, boys and girls, but go ahead and have fun. I'll try to compensate here in Pittsburgh. You're going to pick up all the tabs, Harry? Oh, why not? Always do anyway. <laughs> one and two the count. I said that one time, and a guy wanted to hit me for $11,000. Here's the pitch to me. But Harry, there have been people who want to hit you for a lot less. <laughs> well, I tell you, I, I know one guy I'm going to hit if his cigar doesn't improve in caliber. Now, I gave you an inning of dispensation because i got to get on downstairs. Two balls, two strikes. Line drive right to down for the out. That's been the only ball hit hard off Sutcliffe. And it isn't one of the two hits. The two hits, the first one that resulted in a run, here we're going to show it to you again, a line drive, was a dribbling ground ball that just got by Durham and trickled into the corner, rolled around the two walls down there and went for a triple. The second hit was by the same man, Joe Orselak, who beat out a perfect drag bunt. There's only been two fly balls with seven strikeouts. That shows you how dominant Sutcliffe has been all night. Here now is a strike on the outside corner to Jim Morrison. 
Chris Dressen and George Gieselman from Burbank, Illinois, came over to see the clincher. There's a pitch foul off. Arnie, there's a note from some friends of yours, but I can't find it. Jim Russell and Bill Dale are here. There's a high pop foul out of play. Tom Bowman from Valparaiso. Jim Dowdle Jr., Rick Collins, John Scanlon came over from John Carroll University to celebrate. Chuck Tanner. He knows what it's like on, the, on, the, other on the other side is right. 1979. Among other championships for Chuck Tanner, it's been an exciting run for him here in Pittsburgh. You know, Chuck's feeling for Chicago being what it is, I know that if he couldn't win it, there's no team he'd rather see win it than the Cubs. Oh, and to the count, Sutcliffe really in the breeze. His 14th in a row, his record 16 and 1, 12 and 0 since the All Star break. Struck him out. Strike out number eight. And we got four outs to go. Hey, even if you're a teetotaler, ice something up. I don't care what it is. Even if it's plain water. And then pour it over your husband's head or something. Look at Johnstone drinking coffee. Who's he kidding? He wants to make sure he stays awake for the celebration. <laughs> Two men are out, nobody on. Froble the hitter. The Grubers are here from Arlington Heights. I am the Sarge. Yeah. You certainly have been the last couple of months. The guys are here from Jocko's in Madison, Wisconsin. Strike call on the outside corner. Here, I think these are your friends, uh, Arnie. Bory, Mick, Mickey, Jane, and Kay from Lafayette, Indiana. Here's a pitch swung and miss. These fans, I, they haven't announced the attendance, but I'll bet you all, but maybe a hundred, have come from the Chicago area. A little looping pop fly, Boa's got it. Three outs to go. Taking you this far, now I gotta leave you to get down to see a celebration in the locker room. Enjoy some for me. I'll join you as soon as I can. At the end of eight innings, we about to become champion Cubs four and the Pirates one. see some of the Channel 9 equipment the strike call for Colby on the hill. <laughs> it looks like the, uh, the expensive kind. You know the story on it, don't you? Oh. Tony Garofalo's dad is in the wine business. He got it at cost. <laughs> I was going to say, it sure doesn't look like that cheap stuff that you get at Steve's restaurant in Scottsdale. One out. Yeah, that's the expensive thing. In the hand for Sutcliffe. He's tipping his cap. The Red Baron has pitched a masterpiece. One out. The Wangarts are here from Chicago. One out. The Lanigans are here from LaPorte, Indiana. The Hendricks are here from Chicago. The Johannes of Chicago, the Feldman of Northbrook, their neighbors of Scott Sanderson, whom you saw in the clubhouse a moment ago. One out there near the batter. The Campus Sigma House of Northwestern. 
celebrating the Cub Championship. In case you even care, the Mets are still tied with the Philly. Here's where the story is. The Cubs are winning with three outs to go. The Giesemans from Burbank are here. Some friends of yours, I think, Arnie. There's a ground ball hit to Sharp. Easy play at first base. They're from uh, Gary Stein. Does that name mean anything? A columnist for Fort Lauderdale News. MVP, listen to him. As Ryan Sandberg comes up. They're yelling MVP, MVP. Yeah. performance he's retired nine in a row so we go to the bottom of the ninth hold everything including that champagne Cubs are leading four to one Harry Carey back in Pittsburgh it's about to happen a message from Eddie Munzel former sports writer a great gentleman congratulating the Cubs Barney Foshi of Mississippi, congratulations. Judge Tapkin of Yankton, South Dakota, congratulations. Howard Wolpen and Rick Ruggo out of Governor Jim Thompson's office. Mayor Gann of Streamwood, Illinois. There you go. Wotus, the shot stops the hitter. There you see the Cub dugout. Three outs away from the first championship since 1945. That was a war year. The first thing he'll do, go over to congratulate Jim Fry. Boy, I wish there's a way to let you appreciate how much of this crowd is from, is from Chicago. There's Steve ready in the dressing room. <laughs> Lee Mazzilli, the pinch hitter. One out, only two to go. Sutcliffe about to nail it down for the Cubs. Look at the totals on the board for the Pirates. One run, two hits, three errors. Lee Mazzilli, the hitter. Fouls it out of play, two balls and a strike. Show the crowd here. That's something. They're making the noise of 50 foul. Look at them. All Cub fans. Two balls, two strikes. Low outside. Come on, Lee. That was close enough. Get it over with. Three and two. One out. Rick Sutcliffe.
over. The Chicago Cubs will be the new Eastern Division champ. They're getting security men on the field. These Cub fans are going to explode. Jimmy Fry on his feet. First up, then down. First up, then down. Who's excited? Triple to right to just roll around in the corner against the wall and a safe bunt. That's how close Sutcliffe has been to perfection. This guy's the only base runner, and he was on twice. Was picked off once. He will have faced only 28 men. 27 would be perfection. He started the swing, he held up. Hey, on the appeal, he went around, they say. Listen to those crowd. Might as well join them. is 14th in a row, 16 and 1 for the year. He faced only 28 men. He pitched a two-hitter. Let's just watch him. The fans are getting out of the field. You'd think there were 50,000 here. There's Bob Iback right there, publicity man, Yosh Kawana in front of him. They're on their way in, there's Vince Lloyd, who's handling the clubhouse for the WGN radio. Here's the ball, John Vukovic. All right, Steve, get him as they come in. They're all coming in right now, one of the great moments in Chicago sports history. Rick the Sutcliffe, the 20th win of the, of the year. Steve. What a night here, the people are going crazy. Unbelievable down here. A happy bunch of Cubs, a well-deserved win. It's great to be in the locker room. I'll tell you what, this is something they've been waiting since spring training for. Nobody thought they could do it. As it turned out, they did. So Rick Sutcliffe, the man of the hour, Harry. You're going to be back to me in a little bit, so take it away and explain the game to everybody who is right, going crazy in Chicago. I think much of the, just as much drama is on this field. These great Cub fans, there's Rick Sutcliffe. The Red Baron Indeed, what a ball game he picked. The expressions, there's what made them a team. Genuine affection for each other. There's Popeye, Don Z there's Steve Trout. They have pitched the most important game of all. Now, I guess none, no game would be more important than this. Larry Boa. Sarge. There they are outside the dugout. John Cox being doused. Jim Fry and Dallas Green. Now our lives are complete. The Cubs are number one. There's Warren Brewster. What did I say about Tete Tumblers a little earlier? single member of his championship team. And here we come to the wasteful part of the night, when instead of guzzling it down, they pour it. There's Ned Coletti who's done a great job. Stay with us.
so we'll be back with more following that. Harry Carey back in Three Rivers Stadium. All the action is in the clubhouse, and we'll, we'll be switching it there in a moment. Here, though, quickly, one of the greatest games perhaps ever pitched. Rick Sutcliffe faced only 28 men. Only one man reached base. He did it twice. Once on a safe bunt, and he, then he was picked off first. The other time, a rolling ball rolled down in the right field corner and went for a triple. He later scored. He faced only 28 men. Perfection would be 27. He pitched a two-hitter. He struck out nine. He, if he isn't the Cy Young Award winner, nobody is. So the Cubs have clinched the Eastern Division title. Harry Carey up in the broadcast booth. Boy, oh boy, I'm envious of the fellas down in the clubhouse. So I'm going to head for down there now. I'd like to drink part of what they're pouring. See you later. Here's Steve Stone now. A very happy Jody Davis in a champagne-filled clubhouse. And Jody, <laughs> this is what you've been waiting your whole career I'll for. i tell you what. This is... Oh. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> this is so great. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it's been... It's been a while now coming, but I tell you what, uh, there's nothing any better. What was it like to catch Sutcliffe tonight, a two-hitter, probably as good a stuff as he had in a while? Well, yeah, he's, he had his good stuff. Um, I haven't caught him that he hadn't had his good stuff. Uh, maybe he didn't have quite the pop on his fastball, but he changed speeds, and his location was so good that um, you know, it really didn't matter. Was, oh, this is great. Is it work all, all the work in spring training to be here tonight? Oh, man, all the work, the whole year of the spring training, the off season, everything makes it worthwhile right now. Weren't you the one who said, what did the Mets do? Yeah, what did the Mets do tonight? <laughs> it doesn't matter what the Mets did tonight or any other night because that's it. Chicago's been waiting a long time for this. Jody, it's just been a magnificent time, and everybody came together tonight. When you came into this ball game, what were you thinking about? Well, we knew we just, you know, we were right there. We were one away, and um, with Rick going, we knew if we could if we could get him some runs early, then it'd just make us a lot, a lot easier on us. And uh, you know, to put um, to put one up in the first three innings and to give him give him a three run lead right there off the bat, um, we knew right then that um, you know it was going to be close. How important is that first game against San Diego and Wrigley Field? Well, um, I think they'll all be important then, but um, right now. We're not going to think about it. We're just going to go ahead and have some fun tonight. Well, Jody, take care and celebrate. We're going to throw it to Jack Brickhouse. All right. All right. Look who I've got here, a half-drowned fellow who's the happiest half-drowned man in the world. Dallas, congratulations. I know what this means to you. Well, Brick, it, it's it's neat to see all these guys enjoy it. It's, it's neat to have our fans enjoy it. I know it's neat to have you enjoy it, by golly. You you know, that, that was great that you had a little share of it, and I'm uh, proud of you. We waited a long time for this one, Dallas. We, all, we all have waited a long time. Our Cubs fans have waited a long when, time. When did you feel like you had really turned this club around? Well, I, I really felt after we came out of spring training, we made the Matthews the near thing. We came out of spring training, we we played pretty good on the coast and came home and played good. I felt then that the team had enough stuff to get it done. But we had a breakdown. Sanderson Ruthman broke down. We had to go out and make some trades. We got that done. Our baseball people worked hard all year. This baseball team is a good baseball team, Jack Brickhouse. No you know that. About that. There's no for Dallas. I know you got nine million yeah. people to say hello to, so go right ahead. Here's Larry Boa, by the way. Larry. Larry. Larry Boa has been through it. Hey, Harry, come on in here, buddy. Larry Boa, you've been through it, kid. Uh, Jack, this a lot is, of times, but yeah, but it's, it's what, just what as, goes on in your mind right now? I'm just as happy now as I was when we won in, uh, in all those years in Philly. It means a lot. It really means a lot because when we left spring training, a lot of people were down on Dallas, you know, because he didn't, they didn't think he was doing the job and he went out and made a couple trades and I'll tell you what everyone in Chicago is happy Every, everybody on this team is happy and uh, we got our work ahead of us now San Diego is going to be tough but uh, I'm glad all this magic number stuff's over and we can get on with what we have to do that a boy hey okay. Steve you got Keith Moreland there haven't you I do have Keith Moreland he's been through this before and what's the difference between 1980 and this year for you Red well first of all Cindy I told you we'd do it <laughs> uh, I think it, the thing is different in 1980 I, I was just going to establish winning baseball team and, and uh, I came 
this team, I was the first transition that Dallas made. I, I came here in 1982. Uh, we didn't play too well for a couple years, and you didn't know what was going to happen. And then this year, I wasn't sure I was going to get a chance to play. And now, just to get the opportunity to be on a ball club that's division champion, I thank the good Lord for that opportunity and, and love every one of these guys in this room. It's, it's nothing you can describe, Steve. It's like... Uh, you know, losing is like kissing your sister. I think you know, and and uh, this is this is just the greatest feel you can have in the world. We got two more of these parties. I hope to go through. Uh, I've been through this before, and uh, let's just celebrate tonight and try to take on the Padres. It's got to be vindication for you because it was a tough two months of the season. I remember talking to you then. It was frustrating for you. All of a sudden, everything came together. And does it make all the work pay off? Well, anytime you get, like I said, uh, uh, you know, you got to feel fortunate. Anytime you get the opportunity to play in the big leagues. And then to get the opportunity to play on a team that's a contender and then get a chance to win like this. And like I said, uh, I, at that time I wanted to go play baseball. If I'd have known now what I know now, I wouldn't have said a word. But it ended up just like I couldn't have written it down on a piece of paper and made it any better. Well, Keith, congratulations. Thank you. Jack Brickhouse is with Ryan Sandberg. Take it away, Jack. All right, Ryanie boy. Here's the guy that they're really crowding around here. It's the one you can breathe in here, Ryan. What a feeling this has to be for a young guy like you. Unbelievable. This is what it's all about is winning and and, uh, you know, this is what we've been shooting for all year. And it just, it just seemed like it took a long time to get here. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a great feeling now that, it, uh, now that everything's happened all right for us. What were your thoughts in that ninth inning? Anything at all? Like, please hit it to me. I was ready for the ball hit, just like any other time. And, uh, you know, I was just waiting for that last out. You know, just feel like a volcano out there, ready to burst in that, that situation. At any time this year, did you really feel you were going to have the kind of a season you're winding up with? Not really. I, I kind of surprised myself this year a little bit, but, uh, you know, I had some success, and uh, then I got my confidence built up, and uh, after that, I was all, expecting on Did you hear all those Cub fans yelling MVP, MVP yeah, the last time you came I out? I heard that. I heard that. It's a great feeling. A lot of Cub fans around here. All right, all right. Congratulations. All right, Stevie, who have you got over there, buddy? Bobby Dernier, and a happy Bob Dernier. It's the first time around for you. You were there in September with the Phillies, but nothing like all season of contribution, Bobby. No, I'm proud of everybody in here, and... Uh, this is it. This is the best. Thanks, Vicky, Becky, KC, and thanks to everybody in here. This is great. These these guys are. Uh, I'll go to war with them tomorrow. This is the best. Is this stuff good for your hair? I don't know. Everybody's got it all over I them. Don't care. I got the worst moss in here, so I don't care. <laughs> I think it's terrific. You had a fine year. Everybody here is really excited, and well, you should be, Bobby. Oh yeah. Congratulations to you. Thank you very much. Stay with us. We're going to be back in a minute, and then we're going to show you a wild scene at Wrigley Field. They're going crazy in Chicago. Chicago. Be back in a minute. This isn't the only place that's going crazy. They're going crazy at Wrigley Field. We've got a camera there, and we're going to show it all to you. Leon Durham. 
Durham who thinks this thing is Visine because he keeps putting it in my eyes, as well as someone else here. Leon, how does it feel? Hey, Steve, it feels great right now in order to come over here and accomplish something that a lot of the ball players really set out to do this year. And ever since the first week, the last week of spring training, we were able to get together as a team. And the way Dallas had went out and, and picked up Sutcliffe and guys like George Frazier has to come over here and did an outstanding job for us. So we got a lot to be thankful for now. Is it a little better for you now after a real tough beginning of the season? Some boos, not many, but now it's got to be a vindication for everything you did this year. Yes, well, it was the purpose of uh, the situation with Buckner and I at first base. And, you know, the fans, they, it wasn't, it wasn't the, the purpose of me being booed. It was the situation. And, you know, I, t I took it well. And, you know, I was just glad that I was able to get out there and perform and, and play the position the way I knew how and, and got to continue playing it this year. Leon, your ace went to the mound tonight. Did it give you guys a little feeling of comfort to know that the big guy was out there hurling for you? Yes, but when you got a guy like Sutcliffe out there throwing, and, and he's good for maybe one bad outing, but you can't see this guy going to go out here and have back-to-back -back bad outings. The last one he had in Chicago, he was due for that one. So this uh, this uh, appearance he had tonight was outstanding for us, and it kept us relaxed after we got out and, and got the uh, the, the go-ahead lead, and it didn't bother us. We were able to just put things together. I'm just glad we go ahead on and just go to the playoffs right now. Leon, congratulations. Right, you Steve. earned it. All right, thank you. Jack Brickhouse is with the skipper, Jim Fry. All right, I got him right here. Congratulations, Jimmy. That was some embrace you and Dallas gave each other, and I can certainly understand it. Well, I tell you, a lot of people don't realize the things that are said and done, and 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 I appreciate the nerve that Dallas showed. And nobody in baseball works harder, and he, and he went out and did some things this year that took some nerve, and I, I appreciate it because he gave us some great players, Jack. Let me ask you this now, Jim. When in the season did you honestly feel that the Cubs had a chance for first place? I thought so after the All-Star break when we started to play. I said after the All-Star break, the first two weeks after the All-Star break, I felt like I'd know if we were going to be serious all the way. Oh, you dog. Oh, which one of my good friends did that? Zimmer, your buddy Zimmer, your Cincinnati yeah. boyfriend Zimmer. Yeah. Oh, nice yeah. going. All this and he tops bad horses too. <laughs> oh. You think I would? I uh, finally did something right when I took that coat off. All right, listen, Jim. Congratulations. Thank you. Pardon me. Is Garofalo around with some eye drops? Listen, it's wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. I can't express it, but thanks to everybody. And right now, let's go back to to uh, Steve Stone. I think he's got uh, Billy Connors. <laughs> Billy Connors, when this season started, everybody looked at that pitching staff and said, get out the outfielders. But it didn't turn out that way. You did a phenomenal job this year. Well, thank you, Steve. You know, these guys went out and did it themselves. Dallas brought in some uh, great arms. And uh, when you got talent out there, you got a heck of a shot at winning. And, and he, he did a phenomenal job for us. Everybody talks about Rick Sutcliffe. And, of course, he came over from Cleveland. But I think the hallmark of Billy Connors this year was Steve Trout. He had his best year. I know you worked hard with him. And it had to give you special gratification yesterday, the way he went out there and won maybe the biggest game of the year. Well, he's my main man. You know, he, he's worked off a hard at it, Steve, and, and there could, couldn't have been a greater thrill for me to see him go out and pitch a game that we needed to win. He went out and gave us an outstanding effort and, and turned us right around. And when you, something like that, that just gives you goosebumps inside because that's what it's all about. Three more wins to go. You got a place on that finger for a ring? I sure do. I, it's a, I tell you, that I was original Cub. I know what it is for us to win in Chicago. There's no greater fans in the world, and it's the greatest honor in the world to do this, what we're doing right now. Well, Billy, they're dancing all over town. Congratulations to you. It's a pleasure to be associated with you. Thank you, Steve. I enjoy it. We're going to be back in a minute. Stay tuned. It is exciting down here. We're about to go on. Okay, hey, we got ourselves quite a group here. Andy McKenna, the chairman of the board. Here's Stan Cook, who represents the Tribune Company, which owns the Cubs. Here's Harry Carey. Turn around there, Stan. Let him take a look at that happy owner's face, will you? And Andy, congratulations. You're the guy who picked Dallas Green, and Dallas is the There's guy who put guy. the ball club together. Here's John Madigan, the executive vice president of Tribune Company. Hey, and here's Harry Carey. I have a little sip for you. Hey, can I tell you something, Harry? I don't know about you, but I've been waiting 39 years for this, which is better than half of my life. Yeah, but you could have been there and you went over to do the Sox game. I was shut out. Well, we gonna... that's why. All right, you were doing the Cardinals. <laughs> you were the hated enemy from the South yourself. Now, here we are together, and isn't that great about the game of baseball? Oh, terrific. And I tell you, it couldn't happen to nicer people 
and a more deserving company than Tribune Company. And you know, Andy McKenna is the first guy I knew. When I saw that he, you had made him president of the Cubs, I knew you were on the right track. Oh, and from that point on, the graph just went up. Well, Andy, Andy got Dallas Green. Dallas Green got the rest of them. And here we are. I hope we get loaded tonight. <laughs> Stan Cook, John Madigan, what are your thoughts right now? As you know, after all, you're kind of new at being owners of baseball teams. I'm new at this. Yeah, we sure are. Uh, I, I can't. Uh, I can't describe it, uh, Jack. It's just. Uh, it's an unbelievable scene. It's just. Uh, it's great for everybody. Well, the guy who cleans scoots is going to get some business from this crowd tonight. Sure. Yeah, let's keep it this way, Jack. Hey, listen, I got the first. Every year. I got the first championship cap. Cubs 1984 champion. All right. Well, let's make, let, Harry, let's make that say world champions. Let's get right. that fire. Absolutely. We'll cap. All right, kid. <laughs> Listen, congratulations on the super job you've done oh, this year, thank pal. You. Jack, always a uh, pleasure. God love you. And all of you guys. That WGN crew is the greatest. And now let's go back to Steve. I think he's got Ron Say over there. I do have Ron Say here. And, Ron, after all you've been through this year with all the injuries, it's got to make you feel great. Well, I feel great. I'm sure everybody feels great. Uh, you know, I just like to say thanks to, uh, you know, our new management that's been here for three years. Uh, you know, plus uh, Dallas for getting a lot of ball players over here in a short period of time. Those moves turned everything around for us. We came together as a ball.